What's going on everybody? Chump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy, having a great day. As you can see, this is the grow tent that we got. Let's, uh, let's check it out actually. I'll show you guys what I'm dealing with. So if we look inside here, as you can see, we have nine and 10 amps, which only leaves about 11 amps left to go on that PDU because that's a 30 amp trip light PDU. I have three mining rigs in here, one out here. This one's just kind of heating the playroom right now in the basement, just have some supplemental heat. And these are getting vented right into my HVAC system to heat the rest of my house. So my issue right now is that breaker and PDU is actually becoming full, which is right here. It's a two pole, 30 amp breaker. That needs to be upgraded to a 100 amp sub panel. <sighs> I am terrified. <laughs> but I have to do it. So, I mean, I know I can. I put in that 30 amp by myself, hooked it up to this uh, outlet. I mean, it's, it's really not hard. It's just dangerous. So, fair warning, please don't do this at home. This is not something I recommend you guys do. I think you should hire a licensed professional. I do hold a master's license for plumbing. I've been around the trades my entire life. I know how to do electrical. Please don't follow anything I do. Do it at your own risk if you're going to. With that being said, let me tell you my plans. So this right here is a 125 amp main lug sub panel, has eight slots for two pole breakers. So I could put four two pole breakers in here. I'm probably gonna put like three 20 amp and one 30. If I'm not mistaken, that's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna utilize all of the amps in this thing. You wanna try to stay within like 80%. So around 80 amps is gonna be the max I would ever go on this, but that's what I got. I have some number one wire here, which is uh, four sub panels. That's, uh, I mean, that's what you run it in. This is number one wire. Then we have some inch and a quarter clips that I don't think I'm gonna need because I actually changed my mind once I arrived. We do have some termination fittings right here. These more or less screw into the uh, openings on the bottom where like the wires terminate, if you could see up there. You tighten that little nut and then you drive the wire through it and pinch it with the screws. So that's that. Then I have these guys right here. These are inch and a quarter uh, like nylon washers more or less. They go around the end of those threaded fittings. So the end of the threaded fitting doesn't shear away the coating and possibly cause an arc or a short or anything like that on the wire. So that's definitely a must. Again, please don't do anything I do. Everything to be done at your own risk. Just be safe. I don't wanna see you guys get hurt. This is dangerous, can absolutely kill you. So obviously I'm going to be shutting off my main breaker in my house when I do the final connections. I'm not doing it right this second, but I'm gonna tell you guys how I'm gonna do this. So that panel right there, my plan is to basically hold it like this facing me. So the door would open this way inside this room. So what I need to do is frame this up right here to have a shelf for the actual panel to sit on. I need to frame the back plate for that and then the top, basically it needs to be a wall. This right here is where my old PC used to be. So I'm gonna grab this red rack. I'm gonna basically slide it over here and just leave it there for the time being so I can finish framing out that wall. There it is. All right, so this is what I want right here. All right, we made it back. As you can see, different sub panels. So I ended up getting a 125 main lug Eaton sub panel that has 20 spaces and 40 circuits, I guess. But this is a four wire, so it has a neutral bar, a ground, and all the slots that we need. So if we look right here, so you can see the neutral bar is on the black right there. And then the ground is against the casing there on the right and the left. So that's exactly what we needed. All right, so my plans here are to basically run a tube from this knockout spot right here, if I can, down and into the bottom of this panel right here. So let me, let me take this out, I'll show you. All right, so if you look right here, I have a knockout. That's the one I'm gonna punch out. I have rubber gloves on just in case. I don't know, maybe, might help me, who knows, probably not. But I do need to shut off the power to the entire house. As you can tell, it's still on. So this is gonna get dumped when I'm ready to do so. But for the time being, I'm gonna throw this cover back on. I'm gonna get this wired up. Obviously I have to strip this right here, get these four wires. 
if you can see them right there, fed into the bottom of this panel. Try to get the PVC all done and go from there. So what I'm gonna do is set up my GoPro and I'm just gonna speed through it. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so we are this far. Tube up to the other panel. I wanted to kind of hard pipe it with PVC just so it looked better and it wasn't just like this stuff, you know, kind of clipped there. We have the uh, bushing, the male adapter, the pipe coming down, obviously, male adapter bushing. Then I actually wired this sub panel right here. So we have the neutral, which is the white wire. You have two hots. Then we have the ground, which is on the ground bar there. If you want, you can jump a wire from here over to the other ground bar, but it's really not necessary. The actual panel does bond those together, so is what it is there. All right, so now what I have to do is we gotta go around and shut off all my mining rigs. I gotta shut off my computers. This one doesn't even have a screen on it because I disconnected it and it's just been up and running. So I'm just gonna pull the plug on this one and let's go, uh, let's go do the other ones. All right, so we're gonna play this safe. I have an electrical tester. I'm gonna show you guys this thing works. So turn it on by hitting the button. Now, when you get to something that's hot or has power, it should do that. So as you can see, okay, this is all on. So this is my whole house generator right here. Just need to unlock the cover so I can lift it up. All right, so there is a off button and an auto, you wanna press off. I'm also for safety measures gonna shut the 100 amps going back into the panel from the generator off. And on top of that, this is the main disconnect that is going to literally dump my entire house. So look away and here we go. All right, so now it's obviously pitch black in the house. We have no power, so I turn this on. Just to double check, I wanna make sure everything's dead. So, yep, no beeping, that's good. The big legs up here, no beeping, so that means everything's dead. There should be no uh, no power here at all. So I should be safe to work on this now. Now what I'm gonna do is I gotta strip the wire and get this all connected, and then I'll walk through what I did, because you guys, obviously, it's hard to see and record in this kind of light. All right, so we're all tied in. As you can see, I got the 30 amp and I have a 20 amp breaker. I have the uh, wire that goes over to the grow tent, the 30 amp PDU right now. I just kind of wired it back in and threw it through the top. I need to get bushings for there before anybody says anything about that. I know I have to get them. I'm gonna rewire this anyways, because I'm going to uh, fish the wires a little differently. We just re-pulled that one, but I wanna get it actually wired properly, I guess, and nice and neat in this closet. As you can see right here, we have the 100 amp breaker. I got the two hot legs right there. I have the ground that's right there into the ground bar. And then we have the neutral fed right there to the neutral bar. We should be good to turn everything on. I actually just shut that breaker off. Everything else is still on. All right, so I decided to put the cover on both of them just in case, save my eyes or anything. So let's, uh, yeah, let's go outside and flip these on. All right, out here, look away. Flip this on, look away, and then come over here and put this on auto. It's on standby now. All right, we have power. <sighs> Moment of truth, see if I wired this right. 
put the key down for the generator and look away. Okay, I think we're good. Look away. Okay, everything's on, let's go check. We have power, awesome. All right, rigs back on. So there we have it. We successfully have a sub panel installed in the studio. So hopefully you guys learned something today. Hopefully this was something you guys were looking forward to see. If you're going to attempt this, I do recommend you guys calling a licensed professional or a friend that is a licensed electrician to help you guys do this. Again, this can be very dangerous, so you need to do so at your own risk. Don't follow this video to do it on your own. If you do, again, it's all on you. I just want to make that clear. I really want you guys to stay safe. Also, quick pointer, your panel, when you guys have like certain breakers, like I have eaten in this panel, you want to keep the same breakers with the same panel. So putting the Siemens breaker in here that I had, it would have worked fine, but it's not recommended. You want to try to keep them identical if at all possible. Trying to find that 100 amp breaker was literally nearly impossible. Um, lucky a friend had it. So just do your research, try to get everything you need to match the system you have. And that's another reason I went and got the Eaton panel instead of using that Siemens one. I just didn't trust it. So guys, appreciate you all for watching. Please stay safe and I'll see you guys real soon. Peace.